you will notice that there is some common expressions on how to greet people and also on how to say goodbye, as well as to ask personal information such as where they're from or what their name is. Um, you will notice that there are two different ways in Spanish to express um, these ideas. The first is with the formal and the second is with the informal. Because we don't really have this in English, um, it warrants some explanation. The Spanish language itself is uh, based on more courtesy, civility, and that kind of thing. And so the language itself will reflect this element of the culture. We have formal language in which you would address someone from a distance, as in to express some kind of emotional distance or reserve. And then you also have informal language, which, with, which you would use with um, kind of family members or people that you are emotionally close to. Um, we will give two different scenarios. And um, in the first, we will use formal language, and then I will explain it to you. And then in the second, we will use informal language to kind of demonstrate the difference between these two. Buenos días, señorita. ¿Cómo está usted? Muy bien, gracias. ¿Y usted? Bastante bien. ¿Cómo se llama usted? Yo me llamo Isabela. ¿Y usted? Yo me llamo la profesora Ortiz. ¿De dónde es usted, profesora? Yo soy de Santiago de Chile. Qué interesante. Gusto en conocerle. El gusto es mío. Hasta pronto. Adiós, profesora. In the scenario that you just saw, uh, the person involved was a professor and a student. This is a very common use of the formal. The formal will be used in situations where you are involved with someone who is of a higher rank than you, someone who has authority over you, and also for the elderly. So if you are speaking to your friend's elderly grandparents, for example, you would always use the formal. When speaking to your professor, to the president of your college, or to someone who has authority over you, such as your boss or a supervisor, you would always use the formal rather than the informal to express respect and reserve. In the scenario that we just saw, there are many instances in which the formal was used as opposed to the informal. You will notice that they are all highlighted in green in the conversation that we just had. So here we said, ¿Cómo está usted? And using a formal usted as opposed to a more familiar version, which would be tú. Here we also said, ¿Y usted? Using the formal case. And also here, ¿Cómo se llama usted? As opposed to a te and tú, which we would use in the informal. And we will see that in a moment. We also have here, usted, and then also here, we used a formal pronoun at the end. So if this was informal, we would say conocer te, but as we use it in a formal situation, we say conocer le, indicating that we are in a formal tense. And that's how we would use the formal. So now let's look at a situation in which you might use the informal. Hola, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo andas? Super bien, ¿y tú? ¿Todo bien? Oh, más o menos. ¿Cómo te llamas? Yo me llamo Isabela, ¿y tú? Yo me llamo María Regina. ¿De dónde eres? Soy de la República Dominicana, ¿y tú? Yo soy de Nicaragua. Mucho gusto. Igualmente. Bueno, hasta luego. Chao. In that scenario, you saw two students having a dialogue. This would be a very common use of the informal. The informal is used in situations where you are close with the person that you are speaking to, such as family relationships or friends or colleagues, perhaps, that you work with who are not in authority over you. Uh, these are very common situations in which to use the informal. The informal would probably be the way that you would speak to most people that you would encounter in your day. Um, here's the example in which we used the informal and the dialogue itself. Here are situations that use the informal. Here, we have andas, indicating that we are in a tú, so that indicates the informal. Here we used y tú, and te llamas, as opposed to se, indicating a formal. Here we used a te, showing that we are in the informal. Here we used tú, 
Here we also used eres, indicating informal, and we used itu here. We also used more familiar language like chao, que tal, super bien, things that perhaps would be a little less formal in nature and more familiar, things that you might say with your close family and friends. It's hard for us as English speakers sometimes to picture why you would need to use a formal rather than an informal. This is one of many examples uh, in, Span in the Spanish language where you will use two things where in English you would only have one. In English we really have one method of talking and we do have a more formal linguistic language that we use particularly when we're writing, but in speaking we generally tend to use just one kind of language. However, in Spanish there are these two different methods of speaking and in all Spanish culture they really do adhere to the idea of formal and informal. It's not simply something that we are teaching you in the textbook that is not used. It is actually something that they do employ in the Spanish culture. Thanks and see you in class.